Picture this, a crushed skull, a missing arm, deaf in one ear, blind in one eye, and your legs so badly damaged, it left you limping in agony for decades. All while living in a world where hearing danger is your only warning and running is your only chance of survival. No chance to fight or flee, and yet you survived for years. We don't know his name, but archaeologists call him Shanidar One, and his shattered bones tell one of the most astonishing survival stories in all of human history. High in the Zagros Mountains of northern Iraq lies a cave carved by time and silence. In 1957, American archaeologist Ralph Selecki led an excavation into this forgotten place, not expecting much beyond the usual Paleolithic tools or animal bones. What he found instead would change the story of our species. Buried within the sediment were the remains of multiple Neanderthals, 11 individuals in total. Most were partial, fragmented, as if history had half erased them but one stood out immediately. He was labeled Shanidar I. By all estimates, this man had lived more than 40,000 years ago. Even more astonishing, he had reached an age of around 40 to 50 years. In a time when most lives ended before adulthood, he had lived long past expectation. But age wasn't what made him exceptional. It was the state of his body. His bones told a story of violence, trauma, and survival that no one expected injuries that should have killed him, disabilities that should have ended his usefulness to any group, and yet the damage had healed. Not quickly, not painlessly, but completely enough that he had continued living for years afterward. This raised a question that echoed through the archaeological community. How does a broken man survive in a world that shows no mercy? Because Shanidar I wasn't just injured, he was cared for. Before we dive into the brutal specifics of his wounds, his missing limbs, crushed skull, and shattered joints, we need to understand what kind of world he was born into. A world of predators, cold, hunger, and unrelenting physical demand. A world where survival required perfection. And yet, this man defied it. Shanidar One didn't just have one injury. His entire body was a battlefield a living archive of trauma, survival, and adaptation. It began with his skull. The entire left side of his head had been crushed, his eye socket collapsed, the bone warped and healed over time, indicating a blow so violent it likely left him blind in that eye and possibly damaged the frontal lobe of his brain. That could have affected his balance, his movements, even his behavior, and yet the damage had healed. In the modern world, that kind of injury might require intensive surgery, neurological care, months of therapy. Shanidar I had none of that. No doctor, no medicine, just time, pain, and the support of those around him. Then there was his arm. It was gone, clean below the elbow, but not torn or shattered. The rounded ends of the bone showed long-term healing. This wasn't a wound from the end of his life. It happened early maybe in childhood. Perhaps it was crushed in an accident. Perhaps it was bitten. Some believe it may have even been amputated to save him from infection. Whatever the cause, the outcome was the same. Permanent disability. With only one arm, Shanidar One couldn't throw spears, skin animals, or carry heavy loads. He couldn't climb or defend himself. Even eating would have been a challenge. Yet, once again, the injury healed. He adapted, or more likely, others helped him adapt. But his limbs told more stories. His right foot had been smashed, the bones never quite setting straight. As a result, his left leg had bowed over time from bearing the extra weight. Arthritis took hold in both. He limped for years. Every step would have been painful. In the Ice Age wilderness, where mobility meant survival, this man could barely walk. Predators weren't slow. Weather didn't wait. Herds didn't circle back. But Shanidar I was still there, because someone had slowed their pace to match his. And if all that weren't enough, he was going deaf. Both ear canals had become abnormally sealed with dense bone growth, a condition caused by repeated infections or constant exposure to cold. Known today as surfer's ear, it would have muffled sound or blocked it entirely. In a world where hearing meant warning and warning meant survival, Shanidar I lived in a fog of silence. He wouldn't hear a predator creeping up behind him. He wouldn't hear the call of his hunting band. He wouldn't even hear his name. Taken together, blindness in one eye, deafness in one ear, a missing arm, a shattered foot, a twisted spine, Shanidar I was perhaps the most physically disadvantaged member of any known prehistoric group. But he didn't die young. He didn't get left behind. His wounds weren't the end of his story. 
They were the reason his story matters. At this point, the pattern becomes undeniable. A crushed skull, a missing arm, a crippled leg, hearing loss, worn, damaged teeth. Each one of these injuries could have been fatal on its own. Together, they should have been insurmountable. But Shanidar won survived them, and not just barely. He lived for years after his most serious injuries. Long enough for bones to heal, long enough to grow old, long enough to leave behind not just a skeleton, but a legacy. There's only one explanation. He was cared for. This isn't speculation. It's science. Every healed injury is evidence of sustained support. Someone had to feed him while he recovered. Someone had to help him move, to hunt for him, to defend him from danger. Someone had to choose to keep him close when it would have been easier to walk away. And it wasn't a one-time gesture. His injuries didn't happen all at once. They happened over time, which means the people around him didn't just help him through a crisis, they helped him through a life. This is perhaps the earliest known example of long-term intentional care in human history. Before cities, before writing, before agriculture, before any form of civilization as we know it. In Shanidar 1, we see the first trace of something deeper than survival instinct, something that looks a lot like compassion. He wasn't useful as a hunter. He couldn't protect the group. He may have required extra food, extra time, extra attention. And yet, they gave it. They didn't just tolerate him, they kept him with them. Which means this group of Neanderthals, so often painted as brutish or simple, may have understood something profound. That the value of a life isn't measured only by what it can produce, but by the choice to protect it anyway. For decades, Neanderthals were portrayed as crude, dim-witted brutes, a dead-end branch of humanity destined to vanish. They were drawn with hunched backs, vacant stares, and clubs dragging in the dirt. But Shanidar 1 forces us to confront a very different picture. Because this wasn't brute strength. It wasn't survival through dominance. It was survival through community, through empathy, through care. If Neanderthals were capable of long-term caregiving, of protecting and providing for the weakest among them, then they weren't some lesser version of us. They were us. His life suggests complex social structure, memory, emotional connection, even planning for the future. Someone remembered that he couldn't keep up. Someone accounted for his injuries during travel. Someone valued him enough to adapt the rhythm of their group to his pace. This isn't just a story of bones. It's a story of minds. And it doesn't stop with Shanidar one. Other individuals at the same site show evidence of burial. Some were placed in specific positions. One may even have been buried with flowers, a suggestion of ritual, of grief, or reverence. The more we discover, the clearer it becomes. Neanderthals weren't primitive cavemen. They were humans, shaped by a different environment, yes, but emotionally, socially, neurologically, far closer to us than we ever imagined. And perhaps the only real difference is that they're gone and we're still here. Shanidar 1 should not have survived. Not with one eye, not with one arm, not with a broken leg, damaged hearing, and teeth worn to stumps. He wasn't strong enough to hunt. He couldn't flee. And yet, he lived. He lived because others refused to leave him behind. Because someone shared their food. Because someone waited for him to catch up. Because someone believed that even the broken still belonged. His story was etched into his bones, and those bones rewrote the story we tell about ourselves. Today, we pride ourselves on our medicine, our hospitals, our human rights. But the instinct to care for the vulnerable, it started long before civilization. It started in caves, in firelight, in the hush of ancient winters, where small bands of people huddled together and made room for one more. Shanidar 1 isn't just the most injured Neanderthal ever found. He is the first known evidence that our ancestors chose compassion over convenience, that they didn't just fight to live, they fought for each other. That's his legacy, not his pain, not his wounds, but the fact that someone saw him and stayed. And because they stayed, he survived. And because he survived, so did this part of us.